Hey everyone, so I talk a lot about gratitude. Why? Because gratitude is one of the most important key factors that I found recurrent in uh, advice on achieving happiness. It's scientifically very helpful in achieving happiness. And with happiness and gratitude, uh, it can help you in a lot of other areas in your life your success at work, your success at creating wealth, your success in relationships, and so on. And therefore, today I want to talk about one specific thing that we should be grateful for, and that's this ability to travel. Now, one could argue it has its downsides, like the, uh, the fact that because of all this travel, we have this higher exchange of viruses, and therefore, if a epidemic or killer virus were to hit, which could be the case, Bill Gates was talking about this, uh, and he said that it was probably one of the biggest threats to the human species because we aren't really uh, preparing for it, and just sheer speed of movement of humans nowadays allows for a virus to just spread very quickly, and if it's contagious, uh, it can go go very very far before it can be prevented whereas before all these airplanes were moving about that wasn't the case and especially after taking a virology class uh, and hearing and seeing the statistics and diagrams on it it's a bit of a scary thing anyhow having putting that aside though I do think that we should be very grateful for the ability to travel with airplanes automobiles, trains, whatever else. It has allowed for one very specific thing. And it's obviously there's many other things that it's allowed for. But I think this is something you should be very grateful for. I heard somewhere that most people, up until maybe the last 50 years of our ex existence as a species, they never ventured more than 50 to 100 miles away from their, where they were born. And the problem with that is it dramatically limits their dating pool. And I think it's one of the reasons why many people are genetically wired, if not most people, 99% of people, they're genetically wired to be very uh, anxious upon approaching a person they don't know and getting rejected. Um, and whether it's at the bar or on the street or wherever else, it's a very anxiety uh, filled type of thing and it's based off genetics because if you got rejected then though that girl told the other girls in her town and because of this small town mentality you were kind of screwed and if you didn't find a mate that was equal to not being able to bring your offspring into existence so you failed at the two primary drivers of most living organisms existence heck all organisms existence survival and reproduction and therefore the body has such a natural horrible response to approaching someone there's a deep approach anxiety there because you want to get it right it was equivalent to you being excommunicated or killed or mauled or just whatever else because you were unable to pass on your genes however nowadays that small town small community vibe is no longer the case because our dating pool is much larger and I think this is something we should be very much grateful for because if you get rejected or you screw up uh, there's so many more chances for you out there and more so than that it provides you with a much higher chance of meeting someone who connects with you in a lot more levels and has a lot higher quality traits that you find attractive and are just much better for you and with six soon to be seven billion people on the world 10 billion in a few years that provides you with a lot more options than however many people were in that 50 mile radius of you so arguably I was thinking about this and I don't think that everyone 
was confined to this 50 mile radius. If you look at history and you explore Columbus and Genghis Khan and all these nom nomads traveling around, they did travel beyond 50 miles. And those African runners who can run 100 miles in a week or something like that. However, having said that though, even to this day, you see a lot of trends with many families, many kids and students and young adults. They're still very connected to where they are. Nowadays, obviously, there's more travel and so forth. But heck, for me, I see a lot of people who are still sitting around near the place that they grew up. And I think it's just a very natural thing. I mean, I've seen and met a lot of people like this. Understandably, there's definitely a lot more travel and people moving to different places than there was 50 to 100 to 1,000 years ago, for sure. But I do see a lot of remnants in that. So long story short, I think we should all be very grateful for this because it has allowed us to experience the joys and sometimes the pitfalls. But let's focus on the joys of dating and meeting awesome people, more so than in the past, where you know if you didn't make it with these handful of women in that village or community or nomadic tribe that you traveled with, and you screwed up with all of them, then you were effectively excommunicated or unable to pass down your genes and you were screwed. Heck, the more and more you read about history, the more and more you realize how lucky you have it right now. I mean, I'm reading all these things and how, you know, uh, males are pretty much more, much worse off in terms of the mating game, not to mention all the other stuff uh, in our past history. Things like the fact that uh, only 40% of males on average failed to successfully reproduce and have offspring because of the competition. In addition to that, uh, I heard other, I also heard in, in certain countries and areas um, in our past history as a human species, most of the males did not get to reproduce at all because of the hierarchy system where the top uh, ruler had his pick of most of the women. He had a harem of women. This was the case in Asian culture, Aztec culture, and a lot of South American cultures as well. And the basic idea was all the attractive women, heck, all the women, were rounded together and the king or ruler and maybe some of his executives or uh, advisors had their constant pick of just reproducing with all these women. And then everyone else serving the king, lower down on the hierarchy, they had nothing. So it's kind of, you know, unfortunate. Having said all that, you know, uh, as far as happiness goes, uh, I guarantee you, you know, wherever you look, whenever you look in history, um, there are people, if what you're searching is not just, uh, fulfillment in terms of dating, but in terms of actual uh, happiness, I guarantee you, wherever you look in history, there are plenty of people who are at the bottom of the social class or wherever else who are pretty happy individuals. So, uh, especially nowadays, I don't think happiness is necessarily geared towards uh, how it was back then. And again, if you look outside of like mating, there's so many advantages to living here and now. Antibiotics alone, that discovery has been one of the greatest discoveries in this century and has contributed to adding 20 to 30 years on average to all of our lifespans. On top of that, a lot of medicine and healthcare has helped us tremendously and extended our lives and uh, lessened a lot of the pain that even the richest rulers of our time of the times in our past weren't able to get. I mean, there's some rulers out there who, uh, again, having said, they had this harem of a hundred women. 
However, they had to deal with a lot of issues that we don't have to deal with today in terms of medical aspects, health aspects, in terms of access to resources and goods such as foods from all over the world, products, goods and services, and entertainment. I mean, nowadays we have these things called movies. Millions upon millions of dollars are spent to create these hours of entertainment and yet even the richest people of the past these pharaohs these uh, rulers of Aztec pyramids they were unable to achieve that no matter how many gold bars they had so I think we're very fortunate but again having said all this um, if you actually study happiness it definitely does not correlate to all this extra abundance and so forth uh, for a lot of reasons one of them being uh, the whole purpose of this video the fact that we all ratchet up and take things for granted and so I think that's all very important and so back to the all the central point of this video I know I got a bit off track but perhaps you learned something from that the basic idea is yeah you should feel pretty darn awesome uh, as far as the fact that you are able to move beyond that small radius of dating that people of our past did and not only do you have more chances but you have possibly more many many more choices many many more options and therefore uh, in the past you could have been very unlucky and that group of 10 20 30 or 5 women in your tribe could have just been horrible people, horrible individuals, and ugly individuals on the outside too. But because you're in your small little fishbowl, small bubble of a world, you didn't know that and you couldn't tell. And nowadays, you can be the same person you are now, but depending on where you are, um, I mean, there's so many factors that can help you and maybe push you to be much more attractive than you are and uh, a girl that's maybe five times better could like you having you being the exact same as you are I mean that's a little bit exaggerating but um, I don't know if it's that much but I do think it's arguably true and again it, there's a lot of factors that can determine that uh, the city you live in the type of people and communities you live in so I think it's an awesome thing and even to this day you know you can still fall into this fishbowl mentality if you get too caught up in the small world that you're living in right now uh, or the small town or city uh, and I've done that in the past um, but I think it's something that you can snap yourself out of and just be very thankful for and work on improving anyhow that's all I gotta say thanks for watching